Earlier, we were joined in studio by Israel's chief scientist for a breakdown on the startup nation's investment in R&D. On set now for a special interview, we are joined by Avi Hasson, the chief scientist of Israel. Thank you very much for being with us today. Great being here, Natalie. Well, tell us about your role at the ministry. Uh, the Office of the Chief Scientist is the government entity promoting R&D science and technological innovation. We cover all the sectors of technology and all stages of innovation, starting from the universities through a single entrepreneur thinking about her new idea all the way to the largest companies. This in addition to creating and executing innovation policy to drive the ecosystem of Israel forward and to generate economic growth. In a way, you are like an ambassador for the startup nation here in Israel. Yeah, a lot of what we do is actually around collaborating with uh, partners, which in, in general are worldwide. So I, I travel quite extensively. Also, we've been blessed by many delegations that come to Israel to work and engage with the Israeli ecosystem and learn from the startup nation model. Interesting. Well, Israel does have the highest level of investment in R&D as a percentage of its GDP compared to all the OECD countries. And specifically by average here, uh, it is almost double that average of the OECD. Why does Israel allocate so much money toward R&D? Well, I think, you know, in the spirit of openness, pretty much because this is the only thing we have. Our economy is a knowledge-intensive economy. It's based on human capital. We, we don't have natural resources. Well, we just discovered one. But our economy was always based on human capital and the fruits of innovation. 50% of Israel exports is high tech. So this is strategic. And as such, we need to invest a lot in research and development in order to make sure that we maintain that leadership position and the robustness of the economy. Interesting. Well, how have you sought to bolster Israel's uh, area here, its strength in R&D? Well, I think a lot of uh, what the government did correctly is around public-private partnership. It's structured in a way where the public sector, mostly the Office of the Chief Scientist, and the private sector, the companies, the venture capital, and so on, work together and not trying to replace each other. And through the policies, the infrastructure placed, and many of our programs, like the incubators programs and others, we try to push the ecosystem forward. Interesting. Well, as we mentioned before, Israel is often regarded as the startup nation. Do its scientific achievements also fall into the same category here? Well, I'm a true believer that this is all part of the same ecosystem. And I think science-based innovation and science-based industry will play a significant role in the year to come. Many of the innovations we see in life sciences, pharma and medical devices actually started through basic science. As such, it's very important to promote the scientific research, both basic and applied, and make sure these are not two different silos, that academia sits in its ivory tower where companies do their thing. This is why we try to create a lot of links and engagements and collaborations. As you mentioned, a part of your work, you travel quite a bit. You were recently in China, and there you signed a deal. Israel signed a deal with China. Tell us about that. Yeah, our relationship with China have expanded a lot in the, in the last few years. This is a priority for the Israeli government and also for the Office of the Chief Scientist. It matches very well China's growing focus on innovation. The President Xi Jinping uh, has noted three uh, pillar things for uh, the Chinese economy, Chuangxin, 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 which is innovation, innovation, innovation. As such, when China looks at the partners worldwide, Israel stands up as an interesting place. For us, of course, the two economies are very complementary which is why we visit frequently to China, which is why we signed a number of agreements uh, with the Chinese government and companies, which is why we host on a weekly basis many delegations from China coming here to create more ties, investment flows, and collaboration with Israeli companies. Well, they're in fact trying to emulate what is actually happening here, right? I, I wouldn't well use the word emulate because I think every country needs to develop its model, but there are best practices you could learn from. Certainly China, with its size, with its structure, and with its culture, will never be Silicon Valley or Israel but it can develop its own innovation model. And it's certainly becoming not only an attractive target market, but increasingly a source of innovation with a quantity of quality that are world class. And certainly there are other key relationships that Israel has with other areas of the world. You mentioned 60 bilateral agreements. Tell us some about these relationships that Israel has. Yeah, we have 60 bilateral R&D collaboration agreements, foundations with many countries worldwide, really. Most of the hubs you could think for, more importantly, 
through these agreements, we match make and fund hundreds, many hundreds of joint R&D projects, collaborations between Israeli companies and foreign companies. So certainly countries like the United States, uh, which is uh, obvious and it, probably our most important relationship, but in addition to that, places like Germany, Singapore, uh, Italy, Korea, and others stand out. And certainly when you look at the trends, the Asian countries have become uh, uh, an emerging force in terms of their contributions. Places like Japan, Korea, and others have become very significant for us. And what areas of innovation are these countries most interested in when it comes to Israeli uh, high tech? I must say, Natalie, it's, it's very broad. I mean, people don't look for Israel for a certain piece of intellectual property. They usually come here for the fountain of innovation, for that ecosystem that I talked about. But certainly when you talk about areas of information technology, communication, cybersecurity, water technology, clean energy, medical devices, the list is quite long. It's actually about the innovation spirit and the innovation mechanisms that have been built this is what brings 300 multinational companies to set up R&D centers in Israel. This is what brings the best investors in the world to come to Israel. It is that part of the ecosystem that they're after. Interesting. And also moving back now to R&D, Israel is the top recipient of uh, EU Young Research Grants per capita. Explain that. What's going on here? Is this part of the huge commitment that Israel's already making to the R&D? Yeah, Israel is actually this year celebrating our 20th anniversary of being an associate country at the European Frame Program. Programs, the current one being called Horizon 2020. This is a 77 billion euro R&D support program, uh, seven years long, and Israel actually was the number one net beneficiary, which of course speaks to the excellence of our researchers and companies. Uh, this specific program called ERC, which is about young emerging researchers, uh, we've really been top performer for, for many years, and, and I think it, it speaks to the quality to the uniqueness and the innovation of the young researcher in many, many fields coming from different institutions, uh, competing against the, the cutting edge uh, researchers within Europe and performing year after year uh, in excellent and top uh, performance. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.